Hello and welcome to today's instructional video. Today we will be instructing you on the proper procedures for splicing and maintaining slack inside a Clearview Blue cassette. Today's installation video will be focused on a loose tube style cable. As with any fiber optic procedure, safety first, we'd like to put our safety glasses on. Today I've brought in a piece of loose tube buffer tube and on this I've already marked the uh, tie down location and the boot location per the installation manual for the application I'm describing. The first thing I want to do is remove the cover from the Clearview cassette and I can do that by pushing on the tabs on the right and left of the cassette and then lifting the cassette cover away. Once the cover has been removed from the Clearview cassette, reach up and remove the rubber grommet boot that is installed in the corner. At that point, you can move the cassette out of the way momentarily. Take the buffer tube that you're going to be installing into the cassette and slide the boot on in this direction. You're going to want to slide the boot up past the boot mark as described in the manual. Next you'll want to take the Clearview cassette and turn it over. At this point you're going to want to decide where you want to enter the cassette and depending on the application each one is different. I'm going to go ahead and number these entrances 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And This will help identify because three of the exits require the cable to be installed in one direction and three the other. We're going to start by looking at cable exits numbers 1, 3, and 5. Uh, one, three, and five. In order to open up the bottom of the cassette, squeeze on the arrows and lift up. The cover will free itself. At that point, once the, cassette, the cover is at 90 degrees, you can lift the cover off and set to the side. Next, I'm going to take my buffer tube, and as I said, for exits numbers one, three, and five, we want to take the buffer tube, slide it into the bottom of the cassette. Now, as you'll notice, that buffer tube is now coming through the splice tray naturally into the area. And I want to move enough buffer tube in to get to my tie-off mark that I had previously marked onto the cassette. And you'll see right here I've got a little mark with a Sharpie. At this point, I want to take and remove the splice tray cover with using the two tabs. I can lift up and then pull and I will once again set that to the side. The tie down location that I want to use for this is going to be located right here on the top of the splice tray. The next thing I want to do is go to my tie off mark which is right here. Using the appropriate tool, this is a ring cut tool. I want to remove the outer jacket from the buffer tube and expose the fiber. You'll notice I've got a little piece of dry block yarn. I'm going to go ahead and trim that out of there. The next thing I'm going to want to do is take a little piece of grommet tape. I usually cut my grommet tape a little larger than what I need. And you're going to wrap that on. And you only want one wrap. Anything more than one complete wrap will be hard to tie down. So at that point I trim off the extra. Now you don't have to use a string to tie your fiber into the tray. Some people use zip ties. I prefer string, but that's a personal preference. In the bottom of the tray you'll see the holes and all you do is feed your tie down uh, material through the hole and it'll come through the bottom and at that point you can just feed it right back up through and then go ahead and complete your tie down. The purpose of the grommet tape on the buffer tube here is to protect it so that as you tie your knot, 
you're not going to be damaging your muffler tube. I'll finish this off with a couple of overhand knots and then trim the slack. Now I'm going to go ahead and just coil up this extra buffer tube and set to the side. Now the inside of the cassette comes with a fan out pre-routed in and it's pre-routed into the splice tray as shown. Now this is a ribbon material that we have gone ahead and delaminated the last section of it so that uh, you can do an individual splice on it. Now what I like to do is I like to pull this piece of ribbon out and what I'll go ahead and do is route one full turn around the splice tray and into where the splice sleeves area is going to be and then I'll go ahead and just trim this off because this is going to be basically where I'm going to be completing my splice. Now you may have more fiber than I have here when you start um, but you can always have enough to get to at least this point. So now that I've routed that in, and it looks nice and neat, that's going to be the same direction that my fiber is coming in for the uh, splice. Now I'll take the fiber from the buffer tube, and the same type of a deal, I'll route it around in the opposite direction. One full turn. into the center here. And once again, I'll trim off the extra. So now as you can see, if you can imagine the splice trays in or splice sleeves in place, you'll have a nice neat tray and everything will be happy. The next thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to turn this around here a little bit, is go ahead and complete my splices. And as I do that, I'm going to be pulling out the fiber from both sides. Out of the tray. And I'll do my splices one at a time and then take my splice sleeve and snap it into the tray. Now Clearfield recommends a 60 millimeter splice sleeve in order to engage in both of the pins. And as you can see, once I put the splice sleeve in there, I can snap it into place with a little bit of a pressure and it'll go into place. Now work your way through and put all of your splices into places shown. So as you can see, at this point I've completed all 12 splices. I have two slack loops coming off of the tray as shown here and what I want to do is go ahead and store the slack. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start coming out of the ribbon fan out and follow in a clockwise direction. And I'm going to take all these fibers. And the nice thing about 250 is it stores in there real neatly. And at this point, I'm just going to lay it right on top of the fibers coming out of these splice sleeves. I'll put my circle in. Like so. Now I can take and also going in a clockwise direction, I can start laying in the fibers from the other side. And it will lay nicely into the tray. Because we've pre measured and pre routed our fiber, everybody stores nice and happy in there, and we're good to go. And at this point, we can replace the splice tray cover. In place as so. If you're going to be using the other exits, the ones not described in the earlier portion of this video, uh, numbers 2, 4, and 6, your buffer tube will come in and be tied off in the same fashion. The only difference is it will be facing the opposite direction. 
Now in order to make everything work in the same direction as before, what I've done is I've caused the 250 from the buffer tube to create a little S in my splice tray. That's what we call our redirect. In order to get everything into place, you've put your splice sleeves in. Go ahead and start with the fan out tube and in the same clockwise direction you're going to want to store your sled. And here I've got enough because just as we had talked about before, I pre-cut my lengths. And at this point I'm going to fold, fold my fibers right over the existing. Everybody fits in there nice and happy. Now because I've done this S redirect coming out of the buffer tube, I can now take the fibers out of the splice sleeves, continue in that same clockwise direction as I, as I would with the other direction, and slowly fold it into place. As you can see, in the splice tray you'll have your S redirect, but otherwise everything in the splice tray goes in a clockwise direction from the fan out. Comes around, into the splice sleeve, out of the splice sleeve, around, does an S, and into the buffer tube. At this point we can now replace the splice tray cover and proceed. Once the splice tray cover has been replaced, at this point we can go ahead and reinstall the top of the cassette. Start by aligning the pins and holes in the front of the cassette and pressing on the tabs and then snapping the back into place. Everything should click right into place. At this point, we're ready to store the buffer tube slack in the bottom. Now on the bottom of the cassette, you can store approximately 8 feet of slack. And the way you want to do this is start by just feeding your buffer tube in under the tabs. And you're going to want to feed this up until you hit the mark where your boot is going to be located. Now that you're ready to store buffer tube slack in the bottom of the cassette, all it takes is slowly feed the buffer tube under the retainer fingers. And you're going to want to feed this in carefully so you don't kink anything. And at this point we're going to feed it right up to the mark of where our boot is supposed to be located based on our previous measurements. A little twist in here. This cassette will hold 8 to 10 feet of slack, however, I would only suggest you put as much as you really need to get into your splicing area. And once we've got to this point, I've got my mark where my boot wants to be, and what I need to do is get to the exits. And in order to do that, in the back of the cassette right here, you'll notice there's room for this buffer tube to move out of the way. And what you'll want to do is route your buffer tube across the top. There's plenty of room for that to sink into the area and this to come across. And what you're going to do is exit out to a the outer raceway of the tray. You'll see there's a track around the outside. Now at that point, you can run your buffer tube on this outer raceway. To the point where here's your mark from your boot. We put our boot right on there, we can pull a little bit of slack out of here, 
and then we want to put our boot into place at the location. Snap the buffer tube into place, make sure everything's where it needs to be. Then we can replace the cover. Once again, you put it at the 90 degree angle, slide it into place. At this point, reach up to the arrows in the front, push and push back, and the, the cover will flex a little, and you can get these front two tabs locked in. Once those front two tabs are locked in, then push the bottom of the middle here. At that point, the cassette is now ready to be installed in any of our Clearview products.